everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this Batwing cat jacket that you can see Melba modelling here. So we hope you enjoy this fun tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to catch you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this Batwing jacket, you'll need some yarn. I'm, I would normally make this in black, but because it's... Um, yeah, it's going to be so hard to show up on the on the screen in black. These in dark colors don't film very well. So I'm going to use this charcoal gray. It's a fine weight yarn, two to three weight I would say, and it's a it's a wool or wool blend. You could use any yarn that you like. You could use cotton. You could use you know anything. But I would keep it on the finer weight, especially for the wings. Otherwise, they're going to be too heavy. You could change the yarn that you're using and the weight of the yarn that you're using for the jacket if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, the jacket part, the, we make the wings separate to the jacket part and then we sew the wings on. So you could use a different yarn for the jacket. I'm just going to use the same. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. I'm using 3mm and once again I would go for a slightly smaller you know, on the smaller range of the crochet hook, according to your yarn recommendation, just to keep the wings uh, smaller rather than too large. Uh, you, you know, you could also uh, change your crochet hook for the um, for the jacket part as well. You'll need some pipe cleaners or some sort of wire that you can work into the wings to give them a bit of structure. I've got these white pipe cleaners here. I, I would have preferred to have found some in sort of black or grey, but I just could, I couldn't find any locally. So I've got these white ones, and if there's any parts showing through, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to colour, colour them in. Okay. So if you can find, you know, the colour that matches your yarn, then that's ideal. Or if you've just got, rather than pipe cleaners, you're using just a, a, a wire, then that would also be fine too. You will need some buttons to do up the jacket part of your batwing jacket. You'll need a tape measure to take some measurements from your cat, some scissors to snip off your ends, and a darning needle. To finish off your work and weave in your ends and also sew your bat wings to your jacket. Okay, so to make this bat wing cat jacket, you'll need to know how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to double crochet, which is the main stitch in, in all of this, in the jacket part and also in the wing part. Uh, you'll need to know how to make these little pico, which adds this little... I don't know what it is on the top there, this little spike, <laughs> make it look a little bit more like a bat wing. Um, you'll need to know from there, um, when, we, when we do this single crochet border here, you've got the option to add in some wire. And I've added in um, a pipe cleaner in there. So uh, you'll just need to, to be okay with working over top of the wire with your single crochet stitches. Um, from there, you'll need to know there's a few sewing techniques. So sewing on the wings, sewing on some buttons, and then weaving in your ends and securing your ends. So that's pretty much it. It's it is definitely beginner friendly. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to work up than a lot of my other beginner projects, but it's uh, it's heaps of fun. And look at this cool bat wings jacket that you get out of it. So I love it. I love a bat wing and I hope you enjoy this tutorial as much as I did. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, please make a slip knot onto your hook. However you do that. And I'll just show you a wing that I've made previously so you can see kind of how it's going to turn out. So this is one that I made in black. And like I said, I'm not filming in black because it's it's just a bit difficult to see the stitches. So um, I've made this one previously in black, so this is the shape that we're going for. So this is the, the inner edge, so the edge that we will be sewing onto the main jacket part. And this, obviously, is the back wing. So we're going to just make two exactly the same as this. Okay, so we've slip knotted onto our hook. And now we're going to chain seven, two, three, four, five, six and seven okay so what that is is that's a chain of five plus two 
So our t the extra two is our turning chain. So we're going to double crochet into that third chain. So yarn over and double crochet into that third chain. And then in each chain, one double crochet until you get to the end of your chain. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so I'm just placing my last double crochet into that last chain there. And then we're going to chain two and turn. Now just to mention here that the chain never counts as a stitch in this pattern. Okay, so then we're going to just place one double crochet in each of the stitches in the previous row. So one double crochet in each stitch. So that'll be five double crochets. And then we're going to chain two and then place another double crochet back into that same space. So back into that same stitch. So you've got this little two chain space here. Now we're going to chain six. Five and six. And then a turning, turning chain of two. So that's a total of eight chains. Turn your work. And then we're going to place in that third chain at double crochet and then a double crochet in each of the next five chains until we get back to this two chain space and then we're going to start shaping the wing from there. So I'm back at my two chain space. Place a stitch just in that last stitch just before the two chain space. Okay, that we, we worked back into that, uh, that last stitch there. Now chain two, and we're going, sorry, don't chain two yet. So you've worked into that last stitch there. Now you're going to work one more double crochet, this time into the chain space. Okay, so into the chain space there. Chain two. And then two double crochets into the chain space. So back into the chain space. And then working one double crochet into each of the remaining five stitches along that row. And just a reminder that chain never counts as a stitch, so we're not working into that chain at the end there. Okay, so you can see we're starting to shape the wing now. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the next row, we'll chain two, and you'll start to see a pattern emerge here quite quickly. So always chaining two, turning, and then place one double crochet in each of the stitches until you get to the chain two space okay so i'll meet you once i get to my chain two space here okay so i'm at my chain two space i've done a, a double crochet one in each stitch up till that point and then i'm going to place two double crochets into that chain space and then chain two and then I'm going to place one double crochet back into that chain space. Okay, so we're creating this little center part here with these holes, with the, these chain spaces. And then we're going to work one double crochet in each of the stitches until the end of this row. So go ahead and finish that and I'll meet you at the end of my row. Okay, so I'm done there. Now just a reminder that your turning chain never counts as a stitch. So just don't be uh, tempted to work into that turning chain at the end there. 
Okay, from here we're going to chain three and then an extra two as a turning chain. So chain five in total here and turn. So what we're doing here actually, just to give you this context, is we're actually extending the wing. Okay, so we extend it here every, every two rows just to get this shape here. So that's what we're going to do in this row here. So we've chained five and turn and then work into that third chain, a double crochet, and then in each chain along. So you'll have three double crochets to extend your wing out to the side a little. And then you'll double crochet in each stitch once again until you get to that two chain space. And I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm back at my two chain space again. And hopefully you're starting to see this pattern emerging. So on this side of the wing, we're placing one double crochet into the chain space and then chaining two. And then on this side of the wing, we're placing two double crochets back into that two chain space. One and two. And then we're working once again one double crochet in each stitch until we get to the end of the row. So I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you can see we're really starting to get the wing shape here now. Okay, and once again a reminder, just it's really tempting to work into that last chain, but uh, just leave that, that chain um, unworked. Okay, chaining two and turning. And we're just going to repeat that. So working into that first stitch, a double crochet, and then in each stitch until you reach the two chain space. Okay, so I'm once again at the two chain space. And if you remember on this side of the wing, we're working two double crochets into the chain space. Chaining two, and then working one double crochet back into that chain space. And then one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the end here. And then we'll be extending the wing once, once more, one more time. So it will be the final extension. So I'll meet you there. Okay, so as I said, we're going to extend this wing one more time. So chain your three as the extension and then your two as your turning chain. And turn your work in that, oh, I've got pipe cleaner on me, in that third chain from the hook, double crochet, and then in those last two chains. So we're just repeating that previous extension that we did a couple of rows back. Oops, can't get my hook in there. Let's do that again. So then, as you've probably worked out, you will work one double crochet into each stitch until you get to the chain two space. On this side, you'll work one double crochet and into the chain space and then chain two, and then work two double crochets back into the chain space, and then work one double crochet in each stitch, working your way down to the end here. So I will meet you back here. Okay, so we've got one more row to do. So it's just a simple row, no extensions, one, two, and turn. So one double crochet in each stitch to the chain space. On this side of the wing, we're adding two double crochets in the chain space, chain two, one double crochet back into the chain space, and then one double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end here. So once again, I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so there's the main part of the wing finished. And now we're going to do this part here. So we're going to do these little, you can see these little bits that make it like a bat wing shape. 
okay so basically what we're going to do is a single crochet um, border adding these little pico and I'll show you what we'll do with that there we're also going to add in you won't be able to see it oh you can kind of see it we're also going to add in our pipe cleaner or wire in here okay so the pipe cleaners can be a little bit fiddly to add in but we're basically going to place them along the going to just bend it at the bend it at the point there and we're going to be working that in so it, does, it is a little bit fiddly to um, to work it in but first before we do that we're going to yarn over pull through and we're going to tie off here oops a little knot in my yarn Yes, I've got a little knot in there, but anyway, let's say that that's a long enough tail. Okay, so just tighten that. And then we're going to tie on over on this opposite side here. So the way I tie on, there's a few different ways to do it. I just do it like this. Just come in to the side here, place your yarn over top, pull through, and then chain one. And then pull that nice and tight. You can, you know, some people do it as a slip knot. And I, I, this for me is, is secure enough. So I'm happy with that there. And then I'm just going to start doing my single crochet. So I'm just going to place a couple of single crochets in there for, in those first couple of stitches before I start to work in my pipe cleaner. So you just kind of have to manage... Your pipe cleaner and work over it with your single crochet stitches and like I said it's a little bit fiddly but once you get those first couple of stitches in there it should work out okay and as I was saying at the beginning it's best if you've got your pipe cleaners that match the color of your yarn so none of the colors show through and none of the white shows through but I just couldn't find them couldn't find gray ones or black ones so I'm going to have to go through with a little marker and color in my color in my areas where I can see the pipe cleaner through so I'm just working single crochets over top of my pipe cleaner Okay, and this is just going to give the wing a little bit of structure. So keep on doing that. And I'll meet you once we get to the top point. So once we get to this to this point here, we're going to add our first pico. So it's the the two chain space there. So I'll meet you. I'll meet you once we get to there. Okay. So I'm at this turning point. This this two chain space here. So you're going to place two single crochets into that chain space, and then we're going to create this little pico that makes the little the little peak at the top here. So chain three, two and three. And then we're going to find this the base part here. So you can see at the base you've got this, hopefully you can see, you've got these two little two little loops here. Okay, hopefully in the grey it's showing up. But you've got these two little loops at the base of the chain. Just yarn over and do a slip stitch through those two loops and then place two single crochets back into that two chain space okay so that creates you can see there you've got your little your little point at the top there and then you're just going to continue along working in your wire or your your pipe cleaner as you did for that first half of the wing And I'll meet you once we get down to the end here. 
Okay, so I've finished my single crochet row at the top there, adding in my, my uh, pipe cleaner. So now we're going to start to move down the sides of the wings here, or side of the wing, and we're going to add three little picots on this part of the wing. Okay, so you can work in your tail here if you want to, or you can just work it in at the end. Now, so you want the pico to sit at the center of each of these extensions here. So just work a, it's, obviously there's no stitches exactly to work into, but just work a single crochet, probably two, into the end actually let me just make sure I haven't got a big gaping hole there so you'll want to work sort of into the center of the the chains there and then once you get to that center point put a single crochet in there and then chain your three and make your pico with those two bottom loops that you can see there so just slip stitch to pico and then single crochet the rest of the way down that little edge of the wing there so you can see that we've added that pico in the corner there or in the center of the that corner of the wing there and then you're just going to repeat that for each of these other wings so you'll work you'll work down and I'm just working in my tail as I go you'll work down that underside there which is just some chains second loop of a chain and I think I'm ready to cut off my my excess now of that tail and then I'm just going to continue so you, you move, keep moving on and do the same as what you've done with this last little pico so do just repeat that process again and once again it's this there's no real obvious place to place your stitches but just work your way down way you work your way down do your other pico and I'll meet you when I'm I'm down here and we'll work down this just this little edge together but basically it's just placing single crochets all the way until you get to here and there's no need to place single crochets down this line here because this is the line that's going to be sewn onto the jacket so keep on working do your next pico and your next two picots and I'll meet you down I'll meet you once we've get down to here okay okay so I'm just turning the corner down here just down to the bottom edge of my first wing so just work along the chain the second loop and the chain along the edge there and you'll get to this chain two space One more stitch there I can work into and you'll get to this chain two space and I would just put a you can put one you could put a couple of single crochets just into that chain two space I think I'll just put one like I said there's no there's no exact places to place these stitches just evenly spaced around that edge and then I'm just going to work down this last this last bottom edge, this is our foundation chain here, so just into the second loop of those chains. And that's our border done. And actually that's our whole wing done. So you can see on mine, you can see the, the um, bits of pipe cleaner so this is the back side but we're going to make two the same so we're going to have one that will be on the back side and one that will be on the front side so they're not too different that um, that matters too much 
And I'm going to, this, this grey is a bit forgiving because it's almost got little white flecks in it anyway. But I'm still going to just take a marker and I'm going to darken those, those areas of the pipe cleaner that you can see poking through. And I did it on the last one and you can see that it's, uh, you know, you can't really see the pipe cleaner at all. So I'm going to do the same thing. But for now you've finished that first wing and you can just yarn over and pull through. Now leave a long tail here because you're going to use that to sew on your wing to your jacket. So leave a good length of tail. I'm going to leave, I don't know, I might leave about 50 centimeters, that sort of, that sort of amount. Leave a good amount. Oops, oh, excuse me, just knocked my camera. There we go. So that's wing number one done. Okay, so there's your first wing done and you'll just go ahead and you'll repeat the process to make the second wing. So I'm going to leave you to do that and we're going to move on um, after that to making the actual jacket. So um, make your second wing and I'll meet you for the jacket. Okay, so we're moving on to the jacket. So slip knot onto your hook. And you're going to, this is where you need, you will need your tape measure to take some measurements from your cat. So you'll need to take a, a measurement around the ribs just behind the back legs. So you'll use that measurement um, because we're starting, I, I don't have one to show you because I'm making it as we, as we go. Um, we're starting from behind the back, the front legs and moving up towards the neck. So we're going to make that foundation chain to the length that you need to wrap around your cat's ribs plus a little bit extra because we're going to overlap it and add some buttons. Okay, so you'll need a good, yeah, the, the, so for example, Melba is around 36 to 38 centimeters around her ribs. Right, let's say, let's say 37. And then I'm going to add at least five centimeters to that to get the overlap that I'll need to, to add the buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and make my foundation chain. You do the same. So you've taken the measurement from your, from your cat. Add a good five centimeters extra to your chain. And I'll meet you once I've done that and once you've done that. Okay, so there's my chain for the start of my jacket. So I've taken the 37 uh, centimeters that is the circumference of Melba's uh, ribs. I've added about five centimeters, so I'm around 42 centimeters for my chain length. But you'll you'll have yours um, a bit different to mine, and you know according to the size of your cat. So um, yeah, go to the the length that you need. So from here we're going to chain two as a turning chain and then we're going to work a double crochet into that third chain from the hook and then double crochet in each chain until the end of the chain. And basically what this first part of the jacket will be is just a rectangle using double crochets. So we're going to work double crochet rows until we reach the width that we want for the bottom of the jacket. Okay, and uh, um, like I said, I apologize that I don't have one that I've made up previously to show you as we do this, but we're going to work that first part. So the first part will be um, the bit that wraps around the belly at the ribs behind the front legs. So keep working your double crochets until you get to the end of the chain. Chain two and turn and then you'll just continue doing double crochet rows and you'll probably be doing sort of 
I don't know, it will depend on, on how thick you want this part to be, but you'll probably, and depends on the yarn you're using, etc. Um, you'll probably want to go for at least sort of six to eight rows. So I'll meet you once I've finished my, my um, row one, and we'll talk it through from there. Okay, so I'm just putting my last double crochet in that last chain of this first row, and then we're just going to chain two and keep going on these rows of double crochet. So into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way along. And like I said, you'll probably want to do, depending on the yarn you're using, depending on the size exactly that you want, you're probably going to do sort of, you know, six to eight rows you might if you're using a you know more chunky yarn than what you used for the wings you might want um, to go perhaps for only four rounds four rows um, you know it depends entirely on the sizing that you want and also the size of your cat the size of the yarn you're using and the size of your hook so I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna do another I'm, you know, I'm just going to see how this goes, but for for me, I'm getting uh, each of my rows or every two rows is about, you know, just under two centimeters or just over two centimeters, I should say. So I probably want mine to be, yeah, you know, around sort of 10 centimeters. So I think I'll probably be working in that sort of five or six row range but I'll, I'll check it out when I when I get there and I'll see you so you keep going for however high you want this last bit to be or this back bit of the of the jacket to be just always keeping in mind that you're going to be sewing on the wings so you want to keep checking that your wings will fit onto that onto the jacket although you will have this is just the back part of the jacket Okay, so it's, there's going to be a neck, a neck band, and there's in between the neck band and this part that we're doing here that goes around the around the ribs. There's going to be a central, a central portion. So yeah, just keep in mind that your wings need to fit in here. You want it to obviously fit your cat well. So keep going for however high you want this part to be. And I'm going to meet you once I'm close to where I want it to be. Like I said, I'm probably going to go around sort of the 10 centimeter mark. So let's say, yeah, five or six rows. So uh, I'll see you soon. So I've got this rectangle here. And I think I'm going to run with this size. Let me just tell you how high it is. It is about seven and a half centimeters it's one two three four five six rows of the yarn that I've got so I'm I think I'm going to run with that there so this is like I said they're going to be the belly band we're going to um, attach our buttons on here as well but I'm going to run with that and now we're just going to we're just going to tie off so just yarn over and pull through just leave a little bit of a tail that you can work in later. And then we're going to start the central, the central band that works up to the, the neck band. So fold your, fold your work in half. And so you've got your halfway point. You could, you could make a mark, put a marker in there if you want. But you want what you want to do is, and you'll have to bear in mind the um, sizing of your cat. So oops, let's just do, let's just do that. I'll just put my hook in there to mark that for a moment. And so what you'll want to work out. So you'll probably want this to be about, let's say, about 10 centimeters wide and just double check that that will work on your cat um, but what I'm going to do is so go to halfway so one two three four five and then so what I would do is I would mark that point or at least 
count how many stitches that is from the halfway point. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, let's start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to go into the tenth stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to tie on here. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll be working um, tw back 20 stitches. Okay. Well, it, you know, it might be it might be slightly different for you. But for me, it's 20 stitches to give me about that 10 centimetre mark. Okay, so turn your work. So we're still working with double crochets. So you've tied on there, however you do that. And then go back into that same stitch with a, your first double crochet and then put a double crochet in each of those stitches so do 20 or however many is the number that gives you that total that total length that you want of this center area so this is the center piece that's running along the upper back across the shoulder blades it's actually where the main part of the of the bat wings are going to be sewn onto. So I'm actually I'm actually working into the uh, foundation chain. It doesn't matter. I, you you can you know, you'll find it easier to work into the stitches. But I've actually done it on the other side, and I'm working into the foundation chain. And for this yarn, it doesn't really matter. So how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need another 10, 1, 2, 3, so I'm going to just finish this off off camera, you don't need to just watch me doing all these stitches, so I'm going to finish this off off camera, and then I'll have my little centre point that I'm going to start from, and then we're just going to very, very gradually decrease it. Up just so it's got a very slight slope to the edges until we do our neck band. So finish off, finish off your your foundation part of this centerpiece here, and I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so I've done that center portion there. So how we're going to work this is, so actually, yeah, how we're going to work this, we won't actually make a make a chain here as we turn because we just want to just decrease really 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 slowly here so what we'll just do is not make a chain and we'll just skip that first stitch and then double crochet into the second stitch okay so just to and we'll do that at the beginning of each row just to get a just a very slight decrease by one stitch in each row And then keep working, just double crochets, one in each stitch. And we're going to work to the height that we want between, so we're, you'll, you may have to take a measurement from your cat on this, from just at there, so just, so this is sitting behind the back legs. So just from where that would sit up to the neckline, you may need a measurement there. Okay, and then once you reach that height that you need, you will start with the neck band. Now, what you can do is if your cat is with you, you can just, you don't actually have to take the measurement, you can just hold it against them and make sure that it's where you need it to be. You just don't want it to be too long so it bunches and obviously you don't want it to be too um, too short so it you know it's, there's too much pressure around the neck so I'll just put my last stitch in there so that last one will be in that first or that second row will be a little bit tricky to get in but there's the first row and then I'm just going to turn and once again just decrease by one stitch on this side. So 
So just skip that first stitch, work into the second with your double crochet and then into each each stitch along. So just keep working backwards and forwards with that with that row repeat and I'll uh, I'll come back in and, and uh, meet you. And actually one thing I didn't mention that I should mention here is that we will be placing a single crochet border around the well it's actually optional you don't have to you don't have to but it's going to be easier you can just do your single crochet down one one edge here which is where our buttons are going to be because we need that single crochet area to create our buttonholes but you so you can just do it down one of these sides or you can do it all the way around to tidy up the edges okay so I didn't mention that so just allow that as part of your calculations for how wide this part is we're just going to have a single crochet or an optional single crochet border on each of these sides just to a make it a, a bit neater and and uh, we'll, we'll definitely need to do it anyway down down one of these sides to create our buttonholes. So uh, you keep on going until you reach the height that you want for this area here, this, this center area. And I will meet you once I've done the same. Okay, just to come back uh, briefly, just when you get to this last stitch, because we've skipped that one, it can be a little bit tricky to see. Sometimes you just need to turn that towards you and just place your last double crochet there okay so just just make sure you're not skipping that last that last stitch and then turn again and I'm starting my next row by skipping that first stitch okay so continue on and I'll meet you shortly okay so I've finished my center back piece there and just to give you an idea of how tall it is from this point here it's about seven centimeters high now that's slightly shorter than I need but just bear in mind um, you will there's one row the next row will form part of this back piece because we're going to start to add the neck part here so um, it's like I said it's slightly shorter than I need but once that first row of the neck band is placed on there it just gives me well the whole neck band really gives me that little bit of extra length that I need but um, definitely this this next row or this first row of the neck band will just add it'll add and about another you know sort of just over centimeter so that's how long so the whole length including that first row of the neck band is around eight centimeters and that's that's perfect for Melba. So you'll have your length to what you need it to be. So now we're just going to start creating a chain to the to the neck circumference of your cat. So my Melba is about 23 and a half centimeters and then you'll need to make an allowance for fitting it over your cat's head. Okay, so this one doesn't have buttons, only the, the belly strap has buttons. So you'll have to be able to place this over your cat's head. So what that usually means is that you take an accurate measurement, a snug measurement of your cat's neck circumference, and then you add anywhere between one and two centimeters, depending on your cat's proportion. So for, for breeds with, um, you know, very narrow heads, you'll only need to add, say, a centimeter. For breeds with a larger, a larger, wider head in comparison to the, the neck um, circumference, then you might need to add, you know, two, maybe even three centimeters for some breeds. So you'll, you'll kind of have to work that out on your own. But I'm going to go for Melba. She's just, you know, she's a domestic short hair. She's just got, um, you know, kind of domestic short hair proportions. And so she doesn't have a super wide head in proportion to her neck. So I'm probably just going to add about a centimeter. So from, you know, 23 and a half, I'm going to go to about 24 and a half centimeters, maybe 25 at the most. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that chain and you do the same and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I'm at the length that I need and you'll just have to make sure that it's your chain doesn't twist. And then we're just going to slip stitch into this 
opposite side here. Oops. Let's just get my hook in this way. So you just slip stitch into the into the side there. And then we're going to chain two and I'm going to work back underneath that chain just so it doesn't leave any gaps. And then I'm going to place one double crochet into each stitch along the top here. So you can see what I mean. It's adding an extra, an extra height to the center piece. So I'm going to add one double crochet in each row, uh, in each stitch, I beg your pardon, across this top part here. And then I'm going to add one double crochet in each of the chains, of course. And then I'll probably go for two to three rounds. It'll depend on how high you want your, your neck band to sit or how, you know, how wide you want it to be. I think for me, two to three centimeters is going to be fine for this sort of project. It's, you know, it's not like a harness that needs to be perhaps a bit thicker or even actually even for a harness you don't need it super thick so um, you know you go to where you want it to be perhaps the aesthetic that you're looking for and I'm gonna yeah I'll probably go for I might go for two rounds because I might be getting a bit short on yarn here so I think maybe two rounds will be enough so you go to where you want that to be and uh, I'll meet you I'll meet you once I've done mine. Actually, I'll just start to work. So you just, when you're working into the chain, it's just like normal. You're just working into, into the chain all the way around. So I'll meet you once I've finished my two, maybe three rounds, but I think it's probably going to be just two. So I'll meet you after my two next rounds. Okay, just to come back to mention, between these rounds, we'll just slip stitch and then you'll chain your two for the height for your next round. So I'm going to go one more round and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, so I've made my neck band there. I'm just going to leave it at these two rows and uh, again, take my tape measure and give you an idea. So that's a uh, round... Two, just over two centimeters. So you uh, you make that however you know however wide you want it to be. I'm going to stop there because I am running out of my yarn a little bit. So just yarn over and pull through. Leave a little tail. Now you've got the option if you want to to make a single crochet border now it's only optional um, you don't have to do that as I was mentioning before you only need to do it down one of these sides where you're going to um, add the buttonholes but if you want to tidy this up and you want to tidy up this area here you can add that single crochet you just all you do is you would tie on somewhere. I'm not going to do it because, like I said, I'm, I'm running low on, on yarn. I normally would, but um, I'm not going to be able to do this time. So you would just tie on in one of these areas, and then you would work, work single crochets down along. Um, when you get to the, one of these edges, you'll join us, and you, we'll sh I'll show you how to make the buttonholes here. And then you would just continue to work your way around until you get back up to here and you could you know you could keep going and do around the the base of the neck band if you wanted to um you could tie on and do around the top of the neck band if you wanted to it's a you know you could do a different color you could you know lots of lots of creative dec decisions to be made there so we're just going to move on and create the buttonholes so i'll show you what we're going to do there so Choose whichever side you're going to um, you're going to do your buttonholes. Uh, doesn't it doesn't matter which one. So let's say how do I? I think I want my buttonholes on this one. So you'll just tie onto one of the corners, however you want to tie on. And then we're just going to, so 
single crochet along. Now you'll have to decide also how many buttons you want and I think I'm going to add three. So I'll just grab my buttons. So I'm going to, oh maybe I'll just add two actually. Yeah I think two is going to be fine. So you'll work out where you want your, your button holes to be. So let's say I'll put one in alignment with the center of these rows here and the other one center of these rows here. So when you get to where you want to place your your buttonhole, so yeah, obviously you're not sewing your button on here, but um, I'm just checking where I want those to be. Yeah, I think that's probably going to work out pretty well. So you just chain the amount. You might have bigger buttons than mine. I've got a really small button here. So I'm only going to need, let's just do one more single crochet and then I'm just going to chain two and skip a little space you don't you know you want your your button holes to be quite quite well fitted you don't want them to be too loose otherwise the buttons are just gonna come undone so just do stitches along until you get to the where you want your next buttonhole and you might just be doing one button I'm doing I'm doing two let's just make sure I can get my button through there actually I'm gonna to have to go back and do one more chain so yeah just don't do the mistake that I just did just check that you can get your button through one two and three let's do that and then continue along and I'll check it before I move on further yes that's good okay one extra and we're good to go and then I'm just going to do my single crochets along to the next buttonhole place Actually, and just make sure like like for on the wing you'll just have to make sure that you get in the center of the of the stitch or chain Otherwise you will just get these big holes. So one, two, and three to create my second buttonhole. I'll just come across here, get into the center of that chain. And then just single crochet just down to the end. If you're just doing this part, of course. If you're doing the whole way around you'll continue you'll continue around and once again I'll try and get in the center Oops. center of that last chain there and I'll get one right in the corner Okay, so I've got my two my two buttonholes and I'll just check that second one, but if it's chain three it should be fine. Yep, all good. And actually do I need them just to be a little bit further apart? See they're gonna be quite close. I guess that's okay. I could have made them a little bit further apart, but I think that'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, and if, unless you're continuing around, you'll just yarn over and pull through. And snip off. And then you've got, if you're not working in your ends with your single crochet border, you'll have your, your ends to weave in. So let's just do one of those on camera with, with you. Okay, so let's just weave in one of these tail ends together. Uh, you might be working them in with your single crochet border, but you'll have at least one tail to work in. So I'm just going to run through with you just one of them. So work best to probably work your tails into the back. And I'll just go down one of these stitches here. So you just it's just a matter of weaving through with these double crochet stitches it's quite easy to weave 
down at the base of them. So just weave through and just be careful not to pull things too tight. And then double back, just making sure you don't go exactly under the loop that you passed through before. And then you can go back a third time. For me, on this sort of project, two times is enough. So I just snip off the excess. And then you'll go through and you'll weave in any ends that you have. And um, yeah, we'll move on to sewing the wings onto the back of the project. So I'll catch you soon. Okay, so we're moving on to sewing on the buttons and also sewing on the wings to our um, to the back of the back of the jacket. So the, a couple of things I didn't mention that you you will might need or you know you probably will need at this point is some little pins just to just got a little sewing pin there um, that you might need just to attach where you want your wings to sit so you can you know there's there's a few different ways you could do it you could do it kind of this way although for me that looks more angel than bat i'm probably going to do it something that looks let me just get that fully in the frame something that looks more like like this i think yeah you could do them straight you could do them like i said at the angle at the top it's up to you, entirely up to you. Like I said, I think for me that's more angelly. So we're going to do them this way, or at least I am. You, you'll decide what you want to do. Now what I'll recommend that you do is that you pin them on this underside. So flip it over, and I'm just going to put a pin up on the top there. Because we're going to sew it on this underside, and then when you um, fold it over... Um, you can also sew it on this top side, but when you fold it over, it will sort of sit up with the sewing on the underneath side. So what I would recommend that you do is that you pin it where you want it to be. So I'm going to just pin it right up in this corner here. And then I'm going to bring it down towards the back here. So towards the center back, but just off center. And then I'm going to match the other one the other one to this so like that so then it's going to sit like that hopefully you can see that there yeah it's going to sit kind of like that once it's sewn under obviously and then I'll take this other one and I'll just attach it at the top here So you'll, you'll of course organise your wings however you want them to be. So I'm just going to finish actually pinning this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my wings pinned there. Let's just bring that up into the frame fully. So that's that's how my bat wings are going to sit. Now you you've got your long you've got your long tail. So take your long tail and just flip your wing back over. And then you'll thread your darning needle with your long tail. And we're basically just going to stitch, stitch this bat wing onto the jacket. So it's just, I'm just going to use simple, simple sewing techniques. But I'm going to, yeah, like I said, I'm doing it on this underside because it's going to allow them to sit up. Well, at least I think that's what's going to happen. So we'll see. So I'm just going to do a simple sewing stitch. And I'm going to do it as neatly as I can, but it's on the bottom side, so, you know, it's not going to be as vital that it's super neat. But you want it to look as neat as you can. So I'm just going to do a simple, just a simple up and down stitch. So you go ahead and do the same, and you might have a, a, a different way of sewing than, than me. But you just go ahead and sew on your first wing, and I'll come back once we've done that. And um, 
we'll just touch base before sewing on the second wing. But obviously it's going to be a very similar, going to be a very, very similar process or exactly the same process to sew on the second one. I think I can probably remove that pin now. So go ahead, keep on keep on sewing your your first wing on, and I'll catch you soon once I've I've done that. Okay, so I've sewn my first wing on there. So you can see that's that's nice and neat. This yarn helps too, it's easy to disguise stitching. And then when I flip it over, you can see because I've sewn on the inside, it kind of sits up. So that's exactly how I wanted it to be. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to bother to sew this, this edge here. You could certainly do that if you wanted to. It might even help it sit up a little bit more. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to finish off in the corner here and make sure that this, this corner is well attached. Because this is kind of the anchor point. So let's just so a couple more stitches into the top of the wing there, the top corner. And you can see um, from, um, from what I did earlier, I've sort of just coloured in the, the pipe cleaner. I could do it a little bit more there now, but um, I've just coloured in the pipe cleaner so you can't really even see it. So, so that's cool. Okay. So yeah, that's that's sitting up, that's sitting up pretty nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in that, secure that end, and then I'm going to do the second one off camera. So just you know, go ahead and do the do the same thing, and you'll have your wings sewn on. And then all we've got to do is sew on the buttons. So I'll catch you shortly. Okay, so I've sewn both wings on there, and I've woven in the ends. So I'm just going to snip off the excess there and all that's left is to sew on the button so you'll need to of course work out where your buttons need to be sewn on and I for Melba she's I know that she's got a rib circumference of 36 centimeters so from my buttonhole I'm going to measure 36 and you can just try it on your cat and do it that way as well so I'm going to put my buttons here and I'll just mark that with one of my one of my pins so and then obviously I need to make sure that it's lined up with where with where my button hole sits so I'm going to sew that on and then another thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning is that you might need to be able to sew on your button you might need a, a smaller needle with a slightly larger eye or you could just sew it on with thread I'm going to sew it on with some of my yarn but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split it so this yarn has two strands so if I can I'm going to split it it might be a little bit tricky going to split, actually it's three strands. I'm just going to split it to get a strand of this same colour yarn to be able to sew on my buttons with the same colour. But you know, of course, like I said, you can just, just use some thread. You don't have to bother to do this yarn splitting. And you want them to be nice and secure, the buttons, obviously. So let's say that's going to be enough. Just, and with this wool yarn, you just have to be a little bit careful when you're sewing it. If, you, if you're using a wool like I am, you'll just have to be a little bit careful when you sew it because if you pull it too much, it'll just, you know, do what wool does and, and pull apart. So I'm just going to be cautious with that. And so I'm just making sure that my button, so my buttonhole is lined up with the one, two, in the center of that or the bottom of that second row. So I just need to make sure that I line that up in the same place. So I'm just going to sew on my button. Just a simple, you know, simple sewing technique of, of a button. I've got four holes in my button, so I'm going to... So you go ahead and sew on your buttons and uh, 
I'll meet you once I've done both of mine and then we'll just finish off together so we're you're you know you're nearly done here you've got this great little I don't know you could use it for Halloween but it's also it's also fun just you know if you love bats which I kind of do so just finish off with your button and I'll be back I'll be back shortly and actually I've just come back quickly to show you what I do um, when I split the yarn I just once I've finished sewing on the button I just actually tie a little knot in the back there between the two ends and then I'm just going to weave in I'm going to join this up together and I'm going to weave in this end into the back of the work. So I'll, yeah, I'll do that same thing with the other button and I'll catch you soon. Okay, so there's my two buttons sewn on there. And there's my bat wing jacket. So isn't that cool? Oh, I'm going to go through and uh, just touch up a few of those little bits of white uh, pipe cleaner that I can still see in this the back of this wing here. But um, yeah. Like how cool is that? I love it. So you can, you know, you obviously you can use this for Halloween as a Halloween costume, but you can, you know, if you love bats and you have a cat, <laughs> you can uh, make it for any time of the year. So I love it. So and I'd love to see photos of your cat wearing their bat, their bat jacket. So um, you know, send those along to catventurers.community at gmail.com or you can also tag us on social media at catventurers.crochet. So thanks so much for being here for this fun tutorial and we'll uh, catch you soon. Okay, bye. Bat cat. <laughs> ah, you look so cute, Milba. Love a good bat wing. Lovely baby. Thank you. What a good girl. <laughs>